Good morning, friend. It is early. We've got a big project we are gonna to tackle today. The first thing we're gonna do is actually get dinner in the crock pot, so that's one less thing I have to think about. And I need to pour myself another cup of coffee. So about a week and a half ago, we were down in the food storage room and we had started the organizational project down there, but I had to take a big break on it. I wanted to finish it, but I needed to finish putting the garden to bed. We had about five days straight of sunshine over the weekend and the beginning part of this week. And I needed to get the garden put to bed. I needed to do that before the rains hit it because it is gonna be raining for the foreseeable future. I have no idea when there's gonna be a break and I was successful. I got the garden completely put to bed. Every bed except two that still have some fall crops in them got compost, manure, soil amendments, and a new fresh landscape fabric. So those are all taken care of. So now that the rains have come in, I can switch my focus to inside projects, which I'm really excited to have the garden completely put to bed. And now we're gonna tackle the pantry and get the pantry completely put, not to bed, but get the pantry organized. So going into the holiday season, oh, it'll all be done and taken care of, which will be a huge relief. Next week, we are actually celebrating Thanksgiving at my mom's house and we're gonna be shopping and prepping the food and doing all the things for Thanksgiving next week. And so it's gonna feel good to get into holiday mode and not have to think about the garden or downstairs. So now I wanna get going on tonight's dinner. I thought a crock pot meal would be really nice for dinner tonight. And so that's what we're gonna do. I've never made this recipe before. I've seen it go around online everywhere. It looks great. I happen to have one of the main ingredients for it. So we are going to make it today. So I went ahead and I've got some chicken thighs here. I had found chicken thighs on sale, a great price. And so I purchased quite a few packages. Well, the limit was five at my Kroger store. So I got five. I brought them home and I trimmed all the fat, like the big pieces of fat off so that when I would thaw the meat, then it would be ready to go for me. Chicken has gotten so expensive. And so when I found it on sale, I was grateful for that. So I have eight chicken thighs in here, which is more than I need for tonight. So I'll probably end up grilling those at some point this weekend. Let me go wash my hands and we can finish getting the ingredients in here. You can use chicken thighs or chicken breast for this recipe. And you're gonna put Italian dressing in there. Next. To that, I just added one block of cream cheese. The next thing we need is some grated Parmesan cheese. That's probably a good amount. I think before I put the Parmesan cheese, I'm just gonna season this with some pepper, some salt, and now our Parmesan cheese. I'm gonna put the lid on this and I think that we're gonna cook this on low cause I don't know how long it's gonna take me down there. So I think we're just gonna set it to low and later this afternoon, if it's not cooking quick enough, I'll turn it up to high. I already got the dishwasher going this morning and so I can't put these dishes into the dishwasher. I'm just gonna stick them in the sink and later today <laughs> I will deal with these dishes because now that we've got dinner going, we can tackle our big project, which is to get downstairs organized. I was gonna grab some rags, but I think I left the rags down there from when we were down there about a week and a half ago. I also want to, I think, well, I don't know. Let's go down there and see this big project we have in front of us. I did find my cloth paper towels so we can do some cleaning down here. If you missed it, to recap, this whole area was covered in onions. I got the onions put up, braided. I got this swept. We haven't mopped down here yet. I want to mop down here. The biggest goal to tackle though is organizing these jars and getting them up off the concrete, getting everything organized. I want to move things around. I'm not super happy with how I have things laid out in here. One of my mom's friends had gifted me a ton of jars that they no longer were using. And so I did not realize that in these random boxes up here, I had a bunch of jars. So I got a bunch of them out and I washed them and I put them down here. So I wanna get the rest of the jars down here. Of course, before I can in them, I will wash them again. 
but I thought because I'm trying to get everything clean, that was another thing I did this weekend, was to get a bunch of those jars washed, at least for the initial time, and got the garden taken care of. I also brought down any of the random things that I had upstairs in my upstairs pantry because I want everything in one place. So I brought all this stuff down here over the weekend and I want everything in one spot. So all of my canned goods are gonna be stored down here. If I have things like cocoa powder, that can be stored upstairs. I won't store it down here. Most of my baking stuff other than flour and sugar is upstairs in the pantry, but I want everything in one spot. I don't want to have some stuff down here, some stuff up there, because I just need to simplify. If I need to run up and down the stairs a few times, no big deal. That's probably good for me. <laughs> so I am going to condense and everything that needs to be in one spot needs to be down here. I am keeping random things like if I have a half open box of pasta, even though all my pasta is gonna be stored down here, if there's a half opened of anything, it'll go upstairs because then I know I need to use that first. I have some cotton reusable cloth paper towels. I got them damp. The first thing I want to do is actually wipe down the tops of all of these jars because I just want everything clean. When I was sweeping up the mess from the potatoes and from the onions, it was putting a lot of dust in the air. Because this is a big organizing and cleaning project, I want to clean all of these jars because they do have some dust on them. So that's what I'm gonna do first because that's relatively easy. I mean, it's gonna take me a few minutes because I have a lot of jars. When I go upstairs, I will wash the jar tops before I open them, but I just want everything to feel clean and be clean going into this winter. Yeah, this already, this already feels better, just the five or 10 I've done already. I think while I'm at it, I also want to wipe down and dust the shelves themselves before I put more jars on these shelves. So I think what I'm gonna do is wipe down one side of the shelf, wipe the tops of jars and then slide them over. I'll wipe the, the neck of the jar as well. These shelves are not the best long-term solution for the food storage down here. One of our dreams is to build shelves, but this is what I have for now, and so I'm grateful for it. But long-term, we will be doing something different. We have been in this house for about a year and a half now, and I am still working on figuring out what is the best workflow. And I think our homes are always a work in progress. You watched me, I think it was right before the growing season really kicked in, so probably really early spring. We organized the upstairs pantry and I came down here and I grabbed a couple of everything and I brought up upstairs so that I could have my back stock downstairs and then a little bit of everything upstairs. Well, I was having a hard time keeping track of my inventory because sometimes I would think I would have something upstairs so I would go into that pantry and then I would have to run downstairs anyway. And so I was finding myself running up and down the stairs a ton because I couldn't always remember what was upstairs, what was downstairs. And when it came to food preservation season, it was a little bit tricky knowing exactly how much I should preserve of everything because I had a little bit of everything upstairs and a little bit of everything downstairs. So what I've decided is everything is coming downstairs. And that just means I have one spot. I need to simplify my life. I only have so much brain power and bandwidth. So I just want it simple. I want everything in one spot. And if that means I get a little bit of exercise going up and down the stairs, that was happening anyway. I would like that over not totally knowing exactly what I have. So I think this is going to work out really well for me. I'm super happy with how it turns out. Not only am I going to clean all of these jars and shelves, but also I'm not happy with how I have everything organized on the shelves. So the first thing we're going to do here is what I'm doing, which is to wipe down the jars, wipe down the shelves. The very big project is going to be to figure out how exactly I want to organize everything on these shelves. So we've got stuff from last year and then we've got all the stuff that I did this year. 
I got every jar wiped off that is on the shelf, every shelf wiped off. It's funny how <laughs> something is gonna feel super like a huge task and then once you get in it, it's not that big of a deal. So I got some new rags because I will wipe the tops off all these jars as I put them on the shelf as well, just because they could have dust on them, but I got some clean ones with some fresh water. And now what I need to do is I need to actually think about where I wanna put everything. I obviously want like things with like things. Another thing I'm gonna do while I'm down here is I need to do some inventory on things that I don't have. Currently in my house, I have zero cooking oil. <laughs> Well, that's not true. I have this one bottle and this is a garlic oil, so I wouldn't use that for things like cakes or anything that I don't want a garlic flavor. So I know that I need to put that on my grocery list. I wanna do one more bulk order before the end of the year. I am totally good on dry goods like beans and rice and flour and sugar, things like that. But I know that I'm low on cooking oil. And so while I'm down here, I'm just gonna see what other things I'm low and I can add that to my cart. I, when you're bulk buying food, the way that you can fit it, or the way that I fit it into my budget a little bit easier is I try not to have to buy everything. I try not to run out of everything at one time because then that can add up super, super quickly. And so I think last time I ordered, I ordered bulk oats, sugar, and flour. And so this time I'm gonna to need to order cooking oil and whatever, I think I need some pasta too. I think I'm low on pasta. And I know that I'm low on, I have no, I have like a little bit of powdered sugar left and baking season's coming up. But we'll get into that as we continue to organize. Now I think what I'm gonna do, because I have this whole shelf that's completely empty right here. I think I'm gonna start here and start putting the tomato products here because I know I have the most of those. And I've got some from last year and some from the year before, which is why I did not one can quite as much tomato products. I'm so happy, so, so happy with the tomato products I canned this year. I've come up with a new way that I'm way happier with than the way I've done in years past. Last year, actually, this stuff I really, really like. It has onions and garlic in it and it's really, really good too but I wanna go ahead and try to use up the stuff I canned before. That's why I am gifting all these tomatoes because I don't need any more tomato products. I have enough, so I'm gonna share in the abundance. But now I need to stop talking and get to work. My strategy moving forward is to have an empty shelf and organize that onto that shelf and then empty another shelf and organize onto that shelf and so on and so forth. I know that I'm gonna put crushed tomatoes and tomato products on those shelves over there, which is kind of funny because most of my tomato products are over here. So I just grabbed a box so that I can pick up this year's tomatoes and carry a few more jars over at a time. I need to grab my rag so I can wipe the tops off. It'll be a lot nicer when this is all off the floor. I completely underestimated how much brain power was gonna go into this project. I was thinking I was just going to wipe everything down, get it clean, and then start putting stuff on the shelves from the floor. But then when I really got into it and really wanted to completely reorganize and figure out what should go on what shelf, like things with like things, what constitute a dislike things with like things. The brain power that went into this was a lot and I am so happy I got it done. I'm in here. <laughs> I've decided that I am going to have these two shelves, this one here and the one down here of just tomato products. And so I've got tomato products up here on this shelf that I wanna move down here. And I know that I wanna move these up here, because up here, it just makes more sense for them. I think I wanna put these in a box because they're little. Most of my jars are thrifted from thrift stores or gifted to me or bought at estate sales and things like that. So I don't have that many original boxes, but I think I wanna put, those little 
their, uh, uh, what are they, zucchini relish. I think I wanna put them in a box just because they're so little. Maybe I'll change my mind, I don't know. I will do a full pantry tour once this is completely done and show you what the freezer looks like as well. Because I did a lot more freezing this year than canning actually, because I'm realizing I enjoy that a lot as well. Well, maybe, problem is when they're in a box then I can't see them and if I can't see them, then I'm less likely to use them. So we're gonna move them and then I might take them out of this box again, but at least they're all, oh, that's, these are my prized possessions. These are pickled peppers and I've already used a bunch of those jars. So let's stick this here. The problem is if I don't remember they're there because they're in this box, they're gonna get forgotten about, but I won't forget about them today. But in general, I don't, I don't think I actually want things in boxes. Okay. Keep thinking, keep thinking. I need to move these. I think I'm gonna put these up here too. But I don't want them there. I think I'll put them over here. I'm happy with this spot for these. This is corn relish, one of our favorites. We've probably already eaten four jars of this. I probably did not make enough for a year. I'll make those look nicer in a minute. Okay, happy, 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 happy with this. I'll think about this shelf, but this gives me now these three shelves where I can devote tomato products to. I might still have too many <laughs> that I need to devote one more shelf to, but maybe this will actually be tomato products too up there. I don't know. Stick along the journey and we'll find out together. Yes, that entire shelf ends up becoming tomato products because I have more tomato products than would fit just on those three shelves. So we end up doing the entire shelf vertically all the way up in tomato products. And that includes things like ketchup and tomato soup. I, I have an area where I have meals in a jar and one of the things that I was having a hard time with, and you can let me know what you would do, is would I, should I put my tomato soup with the meals in a jar or should I put my tomato soup with the tomato products? Those were the questions I was wrestling in my head. I'm almost done figuring out the tomato products. I think it's gonna take this entire shelf to be tomato products because I don't wanna put any more items on some of these shelves just because of the weight of the jars and how sturdy or not sturdy these shelves are. So I think I do need to remove all of, gosh, I think I need to remove all of these items, which I did not wanna do, but I think I'm gonna do it, I think. Cause I still have diced tomatoes and marinara sauce. And I think I wanna move, well, no, maybe I, Maybe I don't want to move. I was trying to think if I was going to move the Sloppy Joe base, which is like a tomato, onion, pepper sauce that you, it's just a really good yummy sauce, but it tastes really good for Sloppy Joes. You just ground up, brown up some ground beef and pour one of those jars on it. But I'm trying to think, yep, we're moving those hot sauce jars. Okay, so I need a basket to do that, to put the stuff in. I need a bag or something to put all those jars in. And so I might as well just go ahead and unpack this box that I had brought down from downstairs and get these items where they go. And that way I'm getting a bag to use. Plus I'm also taking care of some things that need to be taken care of. To decide where I want to put these. I'm just going to go ahead and unpack this bag too because now I've kind of switched my focus. I'm going to get both of these projects done. Now 
now I've got a bag I can put these hot sauces in. I probably could just make some room and not pull all of them off quite yet and then see how I'm gonna keep going about this. All those are gonna end up being moved, but for now I've got this spot here where I can start transferring some more tomato products to. We're supposed to go here. And these are gonna go here. I finally have completely figured out how all my tomato products are gonna be organized on the shelf, which is fantastic. So I'm getting my last type of product on the shelf. And then I've got to go through all the jars on the ground the ones that I had brought down from upstairs. And I need to get those in the areas where I have already designated the product to go or the item to go. So that is fantastic. This right here is my absolute favorite thing. My, well, that's not true. I have a few new favorite things I've canned this year, but this is marinara sauce. And oh my goodness, it's a roasted marinara sauce and it is so good. Well. This is hot sauce, so I don't wanna put that there. I almost thought that was the same thing. That is hot sauce. Soup. So now I need to find all the marineras to go right here. Diced. I'm just gonna go through the jars on the ground and if I see, that's enchilada sauce. Pizza sauce is gonna go with the rest of the pizza sauce. Diced tomatoes. It's gonna go with the diced tomatoes. Every tomato product except for the chili base, which I'm gonna move in just a minute, but I need this space right here. I need to move these hot sauces, but all the tomato products now are basically in one spot. Every tomato product is off the ground. And so what I'm gonna do now is move all of these hot sauces, I think, to over here. All right, take all that back that I just said about putting the hot sauce over there. I don't know what I'm gonna do with the hot sauce yet. What I do know is I need to finish the tomato products and then I'm gonna move into the next thing which I have the most of, which is going to be fruit products. So that's the way I'm gonna work. I have the most tomato products, then we're gonna start tackling the fruit and then we can start tackling things like broth and smaller vegetables. But I was getting overwhelmed when I decided I was gonna move the hot sauce and I stand, stood here for about five minutes trying to think what I'm gonna do and I said, you know what? Let's just tackle what we know and then we'll move from there. So I don't think I wanna put these on any shelves yet because I don't know where I want them. So I'm gonna grab a couple boxes because I got boxes now and I'm going to just, it's probably better to put them in boxes anyway then in a tote, gonna get these in here. Oh yeah, see, I've already hid a couple salsa verdes back there from moving the corn, so I don't wanna keep doing that. What I didn't show a lot of during this whole project is me stopping and just staring at these shelves and playing the mental game of if I put this here, then this here, and that there, then that's gonna go there, and trying to do the mental gymnastics to make sure that I was at the end happy with how and where I put everything, and I am, and I end up being thrilled with how it goes. But that's what took the longest time was the mental game of making all the decisions of where I wanted everything because I really didn't wanna do this again. So I took my time to make sure I was happy with it. This was not totally my plan today to completely rearrange where everything is going, but if I'm going to go through the effort of cleaning all the jars and organizing, I might as well 
revamp it and have it to where it makes more sense to me for the long haul. So that's what I'm doing now. I am going to move all these jars that we just cleaned over here to this kind of empty shelf. There are a few things over here, but we'll move those in a bit. I'm gonna do it, I might as well do it right, right? So you can see here where I'm moving all of my apple juice to one spot and then I just moved it to a different shelf. So the mental game was real on this day. I do wanna mention that Josh and I did invest in some bungee cords so that we can put bungee cords on the outside of the shelves. And I just didn't want to install those until I got all of this area organized. So at some point now that I officially have this project done, Josh is gonna help me and we are going to put some protective barriers so that jars can't just fall off the back or fall out the front. But here you can see I'm just moving jars and seeing if I'm happy with it. If I'm happy with it, I leave it there. If I'm not happy with it, I keep moving it. I finally have a plan game plan for this entire shelving unit. This whole project has been a mental exercise. I know it's just organizing like things with like things, but it for some reason has been a little bit of a challenge for me. I'm grateful that I have the opportunity today to tackle this because it's gonna feel so good to have this area not only clean, but organized. And it's gonna be really nice not having to climb over all these jars on the floor. Okay, I think that is all of that variety of thing. I'm sure I might come across one or two more of them, but for now, those are good there. Now I need to figure out what I'm gonna put right here. Oh, let's see. You know what? Yep, let's do that. Things like this, like, should I put the apple butter with the jam? because apple butter is like a jam? Or should I put the apple butter with the fruit, like the applesauce and the peaches? Those are questions that I have to ask myself and I have to figure out what makes the most sense. <laughs> and right now I'm not sure what the answer to that question is. Let me know what you would do. Would you put the apple butter with the applesauce or would you put the apple butter with the jam? I wanna get all these jars over here because I know I don't want any of this variety of thing here. I'm gonna put fruit here. So let's see. Hmm. I think eventually I want these jars on this shelf. So I think instead of moving them and picking them up twice, maybe I'll just directly get them on this shelf. I'll just stick those down there. I will have to pick them up again, but that's okay. Okay, I've got another empty shelf. I think what wor is working the best for me is to get a vision what I want for the entire shelving unit, like the from the floor to the ceiling, and then get an empty shelf, or mostly empty, and then figure out what I want on that shelf. So that's what I'm gonna do now. I know that I want fruit type things on this shelf. So I'm gonna go around, I've got those types of things all over. We're gonna start condensing them onto here. I know what I want to go up on this top shelf. I've got these three bottom shelves completely done. And I've got salsa verde here, corn relish, and then I'm gonna get some hot sauces over here. I was gonna go straight to doing the salsa verde next because I have two already up here, but I have no boxes. So I need to start emptying some of these boxes. I know that I wanna put some of the things that are in these boxes on these shelves. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and get these on here first, making sure that I am putting them in order of oldest to newest. I think I'm gonna have to go around the back side. Let's see, just get these like things with like things. Let's see. That needs to go back there. One box done. Not organized up there, but I can start putting Soul Severity in there. I think what I'm gonna do, because I was trying to organize these and make them neat as I put them up here, I think instead what I should do is just get all the jars up there and then I can straighten them out and get them neat and tidy because I know that I'll have to rearrange them a little bit once I get everything up there. So down here now, I'm looking for any hot sauce. I'm gonna put Salsa Verde in here. I'm looking for cowboy candy. Let's get the like things with like things. So these two Salsa Verdes here are from last year. So I'm gonna put these right in the front and then I'm gonna take this whole box that I canned this year and I'm gonna bring it around the back and I'm gonna start filling it from the back. We've done it. This whole shelf is done, completely organized. I have, I think, I'm sure I'll find more, but I went through down here and tried to put the things in order. So got tomatoes, fruits, hot sauces. So over here is where I'm thinking I'm gonna do vegetables, condiments. Well, I guess I have some condiments over there with the ketchup. I have ketchup with tomatoes. That's the thing. What would you do? Would you have put the ketchup with the barbecue sauce or with the tomato products? I'm putting it with the tomato products, but that's the beauty of when we have our own pantries is we can organize it the way it makes sense to us. So that's the way I'm making sense of it. So now I've got two basically empty shelves up here is a condiment here. So I'm going to leave this here. I need to, you know, obviously make it organized, but I know that I'm going to put more condiments up here so we can start filling this shelf, then this shelf, then this shelf, and then that shelf and get it organized. This is what we still have on the floor. It's a lot easier to move around currently. And I've been thinking as I've been doing this, I think I'm going to move the wine bottles and the onions. So we still need to tackle that, but let's get all of these jars off the ground first. We are getting very close. The farther we get along in this, the easier it gets because we've already managed a ton of the jars and we have less decisions to make because there's less products. So it's less thinking that needs to happen. So I'm gonna get all of my condiments up here. I'm gonna put like things with like things again. And that worked really well where I kind of got them in the general vicinity I wanted them. And then I started organizing them or straightening them, I should say. which now I have this whole shelf here. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and get this here. Here. Okay, I know I have a bunch of these two items down here on the floor. And I did just remember that I forgot that I've got that relish that I need to find a spot for. I knew that putting it up there would cause a few hiccups. Oh, there's more Salsa Verde. Got these peppers and relish. Maybe I'm gonna tackle these peppers and relish next. Salsa Verde. 
One of the big reasons I'm doing this is so that I can keep track of my inventory better. And I just found two 2022 Salsa Verdes. And I thought I only had two left, but that means I have, have had four. And that's because I had canned goods in two different areas. And so I just, I don't have the time to do a inventory in two areas. If I have it all in one area, I can come down here and glance. I thought when I came down here and glanced that there was only two left. I thought that's how many I had, but I had them tucked away upstairs as well. So clearly that was not the most functional and that's why I'm doing this. And I knew I wanted to do this. That's why I did not organize these goodies as they were coming down here. I knew that if I put them up on the pantry shelf, they were just gonna come back off the pantry shelf and it wasn't worth that effort. So that's why we're taking, well, it's a couple days now because we started this project. Well, I guess we were mostly doing the, the onion project, but it's, it's a good solid one day's worth of effort. Okay, now I know I have more of these chilies. I put two chilies here and now I can't find where I put them. Oh, oh goodness, okay. I thought I had all the hot sauce and stuff like that done on that shelf, but I've got this whole bag here too. So we are running out of space on this shelf. But get the peppers here. I have one, two, three, four, five, six different varieties of hot sauce. I love hot sauce. That might seem like a lot of hot sauce, but this is a good amount of hot sauce for me for a year. It literally goes on everything. I know some people get offended when they, someone makes a meal and then they smother in hot sauce. Well, I'm that person in our family. I'll make a beautiful, delicious meal Josh will eat it just the way I made it, and I will put hot sauce all over it. I love it. And I have found that it takes, oh, oh man, we almost broke a jar. That it tastes better if it sits for a year. I know that sounds weird, but I think Tabasco sauce ages for like three years or something before they bottle it up. And I have found that the sauce, it doesn't get more mild, I haven't found, but it kind of becomes more complex. It doesn't become so sharp with all that vinegar flavor. Okay, feels good to get all these little pepper jars. I love these things, I use them. These are like four different kinds of peppers in here and garlic. And I use them like you would use store-bought chilies from the store, like in a tin can. That's how I use those peppers. Now that shelf is officially done. So I can continue on the shelf that I had started working on right here. If buying in bulk or learning to preserve your own food is something you're interested in, but you're not sure where to start, I highly recommend look at your grocery list, see what you're already purchasing from the grocery store and see if you can start either making your own and preserving it or sourcing it from a local farmer or purchasing it in bulk to get a better price. Purchasing in bulk can be a little bit tricky because it's more expensive up front, but in the long run, if you purchase things you family already eats, you are gonna spend a lot less per pound in the long run. But there is you know, the aspect of having to save up a little bit to be able to make that bulk purchase. Now, a couple things I no longer have to purchase from the grocery store are broth. This is what I'm working on here. This year, we went ahead and took a afternoon and we made a year's worth of broth so I'm not going to have to purchase broth from the store or make broth for hopefully a year and tomato products is another thing I didn't start out learning to do all of this at one time this took me years to learn the skills of preserving these different items and it took me years to build up to this bulk pantry the first couple things I purchased in bulk when I first got started was flour sugar and beans and rice because those are things we ate on a weekly basis 
And then the first thing I learned to can was jam. And then it's taken me years to build this skill. I can leave some links to some different resources down below, but the biggest thing I would say is just look at what you're already buying and see if you can learn to make it yourself or if you can source it locally or purchase it in bulk. And don't buy something just because you see someone else purchasing it. Buy something because it's something you and your family already love and enjoy because if you're not gonna use it, it was all for nothing. These few jars are the last jars that need to be find a home. And I think I know where I wanna put them. These are all my meals in a jar. Bring them this way. We were officially able to get all of the shelving units organized with the canned goods, except for this last one that I just showed you. I think we're gonna put the meals in a jar here. I think I can move all of these things up. This area is kind of my store-bought area and I don't really have that much of it. So I think we can go ahead and relocate all of this stuff into this shelf up here. I've got some juices. I can kind of condense these ones up here. This is where I need to kind of look to see what, if anything, I need to put on my order. I have got vinegars and soy sauces and different Asian sauces that I don't make myself, curry paste. I know I don't have any coffee down here. I have a bag of coffee upstairs. It was a big bag and so probably have about two pounds of coffee left up there. But I like to have some down here and some that we're actually going through. That's the coffee that I pull from every day to make coffee. So I think I'm gonna put coffee on my list, some tea, coffee filters. This is usually the shelf where I keep my coffee. I think I can put this back here. I only have two bottles left of lemon juice, so I probably should put that on my list. Going through canning season, go through a lot of that. And then we've got some cranberry juice that I like to keep on hand. I don't like to keep a lot of peanut butter on hand because we don't go through it and it's pretty volatile. It'll go rancid really quickly. But I do have one. Maybe we'll put the peanut butter right there. Okay, so that leaves me now. Let's see. With this empty shelf, let me wipe it off. Okay, I had to stand up to see if it looks like I organized that well and it looks like I did. My parents came over, they're actually still here. They're upstairs hanging out with Josh and the whole family. But we went to lunch and we stopped at our local hardware store to pick up a mop. So I got a mop that I'm excited to mop down here with because it definitely needs to be mopped. And my Swiffer mop, I've got, it's a Swiffer that you can wash the pads, but I think that if I was to wash the pads, I don't know, I think because there's so much dirt tracked down here from the potatoes and onions, my, it, my Swiffer mop just can't handle that. So we went and picked up a mop and I'm really excited to try it. It's one that I saw someone use on a YouTube video. And so consider me influenced. <laughs> I was influenced. It might not be the exact one, but it's the same kind of one. So these are the meals in a jar that my mother-in-law and I did together. So it's gonna be kind of nice to have one whole shelf for meals in a jar. I'm not gonna make any more of these, I don't think, until we go through these, just because I wanna make sure that I use what I already have before I make more. That was the last jar. We have gotten every single jar off this floor. Look at that, we are not done, but we are so much closer to being done. It feels incredible to have that cleared. Now what I need to do over here is I think I wanna move all these wine bottles to over here. I can't actually decide if I want to move those wine bottles yet. So what I know that I do want to do is kind of tidy up these jars. These are my empty jars. And I have these boxes 
I think what I want to do is go ahead and store my empties in these boxes. So when I have a project where I need a flat of, these are regular mouth mason jars, pints, then I can just pull the whole flat up. I don't have a ton of these boxes, but each one of the boxes I do have, I want to put like jars with like jars. So in the event I need to run down and grab a bunch of empties, I can do that and I can stack these on top of each other. So I might as well use the boxes that I do have. I am storing these upside down because I don't want a bunch of dust to get into them. But before I can in any of these, I will wash them. They've all been washed recently, but anytime I can, I always just wash everything one time so that I know that it's going in, whatever's going into the jar, it's going into a clean jar. But just to keep some of the dust down, I am gonna put them open side down. I did order two cases of pint jars this year because of my disorganization. I thought that I was basically running out. And so I don't wanna make that mistake again. I clearly do not need any more jars. And so I just want to be able to see them, have them look nice and all in one spot. I'm putting my wide mouth quart jars right here. And it's nice that with these ones, I don't have to worry about the weight like I do with the ones that are full. So here we have the jars. I'm super, super happy with how that's looking. And now, I, well I did, I put the regular mouth upright because I felt like they were not sturdy enough. I didn't think they had enough surface area that way. So I will wash them before I use them. So I decided to put them that way just for safe keepings. But look how much better that looks, yay! Now I just remembered, you are not supposed to store your onions and your potatoes close to each other. So I was gonna move my onions right next to my potatoes. So now I'm not going to. So that answered the question if I needed to move all these wine bottles. I'm really glad I don't need to move the wine bottles. I was gonna do something though. Oh, here. I've got two, what, how big are these? 10 pound bags of salt. I've got a couple different kinds of salt up here. So these bags of salt need to go up here with the other kinds of salt, kosher salt, fine salt, Himalayan salt, and Celtic sea salt. And then, oh my goodness, it's looking so good in here. So I think what I'm gonna do now to get the final things, all the rest of the, these bags that I brought down with stuff in it all have their items where they go on the pantry shelf. So now what I think I'm gonna do is just quickly go through here and organize the wine, put the red wines with the red wines, the, oh, it looks like I have some, yeah, I just have a mismatch. I was part of a wine club for a while and then I got pregnant and so I got all these shipments of wine and we have not been going through it. And so I've kind of got this collection and then me and some friends went wine tasting in Port, or not Portland, but in Oregon, oh, sometime this summer. And I collected a few more bottles, but we don't go through a ton of wine. Usually we only drink wine when we have friends over. And so I kind of have a little bit of a collection here. Oh, I do have this, this is not wine. I might actually bring that upstairs. That's a pear cider that I got when we went to the, where'd we go? We went together. Oh, when we went peach picking. They have peach cider and pear cider. They make it at the peach firm. This is the wine I got <laughs> when we went wine tasting. I know this is probably not how you're supposed to store wine, but I am no wine aficionado. I love going wine tasting though. I think it's one of the most fun things to do because it always tastes better when you're at the vineyard tasting wine. I always prefer it when I'm at the vineyard versus just a tasting room. And I never buy wine at the grocery store though because I know nothing about it. 
except for cooking wine. I do buy wine sometimes at Trader Joe's and I will, like this is a really, really, really affordable bottle and I'll use that for cooking. Okay, got that project done. Look at how much better that looks. Wow, we still need to mop the floors. I'm excited to get this area down here to feel super, super clean. The next thing I wanna do though is get these tomatoes ready for my friend. I'm going through every single tomato and just making sure there's no imperfections. They don't have to be perfect, perfect, I should say, because they are gonna be canned, but I don't wanna give her anything that's, you know, gonna go bad really quickly or anything like that. See, like this one, it's still good. You could definitely can it, but I'm gonna keep that and we will just eat that fresh. I'll just cut that spot off. That's not moldy or anything. That's just a bruise, totally edible, just not something I wanna gift to a friend. And then like this one, that one's just gonna go to the chickens. I got two beautiful bags of tomatoes ready to go. I still have quite a few green tomatoes. I am going to just reset these green tomatoes here let them keep ripening, gift them as needed. We'll eat them fresh as needed. We've been trying to eat tomatoes every day if possible. Whether that's with breakfast or with dinner, it doesn't always happen. We're starting to get a little bit tired of tomatoes, I could say, but that's the awesome thing about when you eat in season is you get overfloweth, overabundance and then you're excited or you're not, you're just ready for the season to be over. And then you can wait patiently until the next season. Okay, so those are my green tomatoes there. I can take care of this towel now, shake this out and give this a wash. We'll still be able to eat fresh tomatoes probably for the next month. This is probably gonna be a good amount for us. This is cool. I've never seen, well, that's not true. I watched someone's video, a cleaning video where they had something similar. I just got the one that they had at the store. This compartment is clean. I'm just gonna put a little bit of cleaner in there. And then this compartment is where, let me show you. It's got this spinner. There's a foot pedal like this. Let's see. Okay, so we're gonna put our mop in the water with the cleaner. a lot of water and then I guess I totally don't understand it but now we got water on our mop I don't know if white is the best color for a mop end oh yeah I'm so glad I'm getting to this it's already not white anymore I'm gonna do this a few times, I think. Meaning I'm gonna have to mop more than once. I'm supposed to be able to, there we go. I think I figured it out now. I'm out of clean water and my dirty water is full. So I need to go dump these. I think I'm just gonna dump them outside so that I'm not carrying this nasty, dirty water throughout my house upstairs. 
I had turned the crock pot on to keep warm. This project is taking way longer than I anticipated. I'm gonna get some more hot water in this mop, but it's definitely gonna take at least two full moppings, maybe three, to make sure it's clean and feeling super clean. Wait, that goes in here, not in there. But I also want to, while I'm up here, I turned the crock pot on high again. I want to get some water on to boil so that the crock pot can heat back up and we can finish the dinner. All we have to do to finish the dinner is cook up some pasta. I need to wash my hands though first and my soap, I found it. It's buried in my sink. I still need to unload the dishwasher and load it, but I might do that tomorrow. I don't, I'm not one who always goes to bed with a clean kitchen as much as I would love that to be the case. Sometimes I have to prioritize other projects and in the evening I would rather just hang out with my family and the kitchen mess will be here for me in the morning. I'm more of a morning person and so I don't mind tackling the kitchen while my morning coffee kicks in. Which by the way, I never finished my coffee that we poured together downstairs. I just got to work and it's still sitting there. It feels absolutely incredible to tackle that project. So not only have I tackled the huge getting the garden put to bed for winter, but the basement looks a whole lot better. So I'm gonna cook some egg noodles to mix in with our dinner tonight. This is heating back up. This is gonna to come to a boil, so I have probably about 10 minutes. I'm gonna run downstairs, finish mopping the first mop if I can with this bucket, and then I'll be up and we'll finish getting this dinner put together. I just got the noodles in the pot to boil. This smells incredible. We need to shred the chicken. I'm gonna plug it in on my island so it stays hot. Should turn it back on. I'm trying to stir in that cream cheese. I like that the chicken's holding together just a little bit, so it's gonna have some good texture to it. It's not gonna be too tender. If I had kept it on low all day, it would have been way overcooked. Josh is not quite ready for dinner, but I wanna give this a taste test to see what we think. This is a brand new recipe to me. Mm. That's good. It's pretty zingy. If you don't like vinegar, you might not like this recipe. It's good. Will I make it again? I don't know. Mm. I like that. I don't think Josh is gonna really like it. I think it's gonna have too much zing to it. The original recipe called to use the entire bottle of Italian dressing. I used about half of it and I used the correct amount of cream cheese. So I'm really glad I didn't use the whole bottle, but I think what would have been better would be to use maybe like a quarter of the bottle and a block of cream cheese and then maybe a cup of cream to get that extra liquid. So you get the flavor of the Italian dressing and the zing but it's not overpowering. Cause this almost tastes like pasta salad, like a warm pasta salad. You know, like a pasta salad that you would put Italian dressing on. And so I think that's why this is probably not gonna be our favorite dinner that, I mean, we'll eat it and enjoy it. I'm glad I don't have to cook anymore tonight other than heat up the green beans and we'll have lunch for a few days, but I don't think Josh is gonna really like it. If this was cold, with grilled chicken, dice, oh man, okay, that would be good. Grill the chicken, dice the chicken, and put this with tomatoes and fresh herbs like cilantro and green onions and parsley. I'm making up a whole new recipe. <laughs> I'm tired, it's been a fantastic day. I'm so excited to get that huge project done. I was able to get the downstairs mopped one time completely. I do need to go back once it dries mop it one more time. That's actually why I didn't grab the green beans yet because I kind of mopped myself out of there. So when that dries, I'll go grab the green beans and then I probably won't mop it again tonight. I'll probably mop it tomorrow. 
we are going to be at my mom's house all next week. We're gonna go shopping for Thanksgiving. We're gonna do all the cooking and prep for Thanksgiving. I'm really excited to have these two huge projects done. The garden is put to bed. My pantry is basically put to bed. So friend, thank you so much for taking time out of your day to spend time with me in my pantry, in my kitchen. I greatly appreciate every single one of you. I don't take for granted the fact that you take time out of your day to spend time with me. I really am honored that you would do that. If you enjoyed this, I can pop a couple of my other videos here. You can go enjoy between now and my next upload. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being you. And I can't wait to see you next time. Bye friend.